The Lagos State Government and the Nigerian Port Authority, MPA, on Thursday expressed their support to the ongoing demolition of illegal structures around NNPC's pipelines. The operation, which affects Takwa Bay, has been condemned by the Amnesty International, which accused the Nigerian military of excessive force. Not less than 300 points, which were discovered along the NNPC's pipelines used to illegally siphon petrol, were dismantled by the members of the operation during the exercise. Muritala Adekunle Balogun, the Director of Technical Services Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development, Lagos State, said that the state government would not fold its arms while the country was being sabotaged by saboteurs. Now, we are opportuned to be joined in the studio by a Takwa Bay evictee. Uh, he is one of the chiefs of the community there in Takwa Bay to get a clearer picture of the realities on ground. And later on, of course, we'll connect with the CEO of Spaces for Change, an NGO who have been, uh, have been very much in the way of boots on the ground as concerns this Takwa Bay uh, development. But now let's speak to uh, Abraham Nikon. Uh, good to have you. Good morning. Good, good morning. to have you. And of course, Barrister Dotun Hassan, who will be giving us a legal perspective to the matter. It's a pleasure good to, to have be here. you. All right. Now, Tell us, first of all, you are an evictee, as it is. Uh, what happened in Takwabi? Let's begin from there. Yeah, on um, Tuesday last week, the military came in suddenly very early in the morning. How early is early in the morning? So 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., Between 6.30 6 and 7 o'clock in the morning. And... Uh, what we heard first was a shooting sporadically. Mm -hmm. And uh, any of our doors they knock at, the order is you have just one hour to pack your things out or you cry. Or you cry. Or you cry. And uh, as they tell you, if you try to question them, you'll be harassed with beating and uh, what have you. So we're all taken because there wasn't any prior uh, notice, notice of our moving out of the place. And that place, as we speak, we have six registered CDAs, Community Development Associations, around that same Takwabi environment. And um, uh, we, we also have a government uh, presence there. We have. The, the, the senator representing Lagos um, Senatorial District, that is in the person of uh, Oluremi Tunubu, built uh, a technical school there. We have a junior, a primary school, a junior secondary school, and a secondary school, government schools, mm -hmm. alongside with medical health centers. We also have several private schools, all residing there. And, uh, Were all of this also destroyed or demolished? Yeah, the, 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 the order, according to them, they were not destroying churches, the school buildings, and at the same time, the structures they believed those who went to NPA to take, um, a, do I say permission or apply for the land there. Mm. And their NPA, gave some plots, allotted some plots to some community dwellers. In Takwa Bay? Yeah. And there is the area that is officially allotted to companies and uh, some individuals who built their chalets mm -hmm. nearer the beach side. Before you go on, I want to give us a clearer understanding of what did they say is the reason for this evacuation, apart from saying, we give you one hour or you cry. What was the reason, the main reason? Yeah, they told us it is because of pipeline vandalism. And as we speak, some of the pictures they showed to us, mm -hmm. as in saying there were um, oil wells or some persons, dog, uh, wells and connecting either hose or pipe to the pipeline itself. That is a falsified story. Actually, it is from this other axis of uh, the riverine area where they went, we're told that 
they discovered those things. It's like they transferred those pictures from the other end mm -hmm. and use it because anything happening on the riverine area, they may not sometimes specifically point out this is the community. Everything they always call it or tag it after the Takwa Bay. Let me ask you, uh, Mr. Nikon, how did you come to live in Takwa Bay? Uh, because you are saying, I want to believe that you were given some kind of papers, documentation, and you're sure that this, where you're living is not marked, it's not on the government line or government property as the case is. How did you come to, to live? How did you move into uh, Takwa Bay? Yeah, for Takwa Bay there, we have the different settlements, like I told you. There were those plots allotted to some community dwellers. Then there is the side that the military, the army, owned their properties. I was attached to one of the military um, para, what you, para whatever workers as the military caretakers. Okay. So I reside in one of the army buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, Barrister Dutton, you've heard, you've, you've seen this story unfold. Do they have any legal chance? Is there, what can be done? What legal implications are there for the evictees and even for the government in terms of, say, when they need justice or they are asking for justice? Well, it's quite an unfortunate um, scenario. And um, considering the just opposed style of the invasion, it caused a lot of attention. And that's why the Amnesty International have taken interest in the whole scenario because mm -hmm. uh, it, it really pretends our democracy has been uh, nascently underdeveloped, that we are still yet to really realize that uh, sovereignty lies with the people. Government cannot exist without the people. And if the government needs the commune um, uh, 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 value, the people need to come first. And who are the people? Irrespective of whose house is God. The, that invasion was orchestrated for one or two selfish reasons. If not, if it were to be for vandalism, mm -hmm. meaning I've, tra I've, I've traveled, uh, I've, 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 um, I've, I've transversed through that end from Badagri through that area, and okay. there's no how you want, even if you're on boat, there's checkpoint on the, on the, on the waterways, mm -hmm. that once your boat is going, there are checkpoint of naval ratings that checks, you know, you know the, the, the the, the corridors right. there. So I beg to disagree that mm -hmm. 20,000 communities will be involved in illegal bunkering. That 20,000 communities, including children and women, mm -hmm. will be tagged with that criminal um, uh, 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 sanction. Mm -hmm. So these are areas. Of, you know, demolition exercise for some time immemorial from the Morocco to Todogbame mm -hmm. to, to Lokola to Amuwo. Go and look at the walls and the history. It's being it's, it has sold the hands of government mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it becomes an economic interest of some few oligarchies whose views are, oh, this area, how do we begin to allot? They share our lands. Mm -hmm. I know that is the, 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 the land use act, uh, you know, gives the governor the right of, uh, of allotment of land. But I also, you know, there is an area which I'm yet to really consider, NPA, Nigerian Port Authority. Authority. When does Nigerian Port Authority acquire land within Takwa Bay? Is that part of, is, um, we know we have the landing port corridors along that area, but not all, the whole of the whole area. We have villages, over, over uh, uh, 12 villages, mm -hmm. because during election, I've run election for House of Rep. Takwa Bay used to produce one of the highest electoral uh, vote for, for even the government in power. Mm -hmm. So we cannot use one um, element to behead the man. So let's look at the legal implication. Okay. Yes, it's a breach of fundamental right. For me, I believe the people of Takwa Bay might not get back their houses, might not be able to live back on those islands any longer, but the law itself that guides the government, that also guides the government. Let the government see through this. Mm -hmm. There should be an emergency, and I, and I mentioned it, 
emergency intervention okay. in provision of housing and every other so right. called that will bring life to we'll the We'll come people. back to you, but let's quickly now connect to uh, Mrs. Victoria Ibezim Ohairi. She's the CEO of Spaces for Change. Uh, good morning, Victoria. Hi, good morning. Yeah, I'm very aware that you've been following the stories uh, uh, from Takwa Bay. Tell us, what do you know? Uh, what, what's going on? What have you discovered so far? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, the organization I work for, Spaces for Change, um, we work mainly on issues involving forced eviction and displacement of communities, especially informal, informal communities where people that are low income live. So when the eviction broke out, um, when we got to the community, um, the island is um, in under Iru local, local government development area, we found that uh, naval officers had come in there and used force to forcefully evict people who live in the community. Mm -hmm and some people sustain injuries. A lot of families are outside. You will see lots of people's belongings packed in various corners. And um, commercial activities as a ground to a halt in the community. There's a lot of despair, homelessness, mm -hmm. children that are out of school, hospitals in the area were not affected by the demolition, but they are shut down. Religious houses are shut down all businesses, the place is just empty and deserted. So, but we saw lots of naval officers milling around the area, you know, enforcing compliance, making sure that people really evacuate the area. So we tried to find out what the problem, the reason behind the displacement um, was, and the officer said that, um, um, they were accusing the communities of pipeline vandalism and mm. oil bunkering. And because of the illicit financial activities going there, so they had to intervene by the use of the victim. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I also know that you've been having conversation uh, with the, the people and, of course, maybe some government uh, representatives. Are there any alternatives that the government are offering to say, while we evict you and take you away from here, here is ABCD option for you to bank on? This is very unfortunate because um, the chairman of Iru Local Council Development Area lives on the island on that uh, Takwa Bay Island. So that is to say that at least the local authorities are aware. The state government has not responded to our queries and I'm not aware that they visited the island. And maybe part of the reason could be because this is a, 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 an exercise that is being conducted by the federal government um, security of presses. Then um, at the state level, over time, it's been hard for the state to develop a policy of resettlement for victims of displacement. We have been advocating year after year to the government to consider a lot of policies that promote the provision of shelter for citizens. See, there are matter how many housing estates you build across the, the country. There are people that are not still going to be able to afford it. And it's the same thing in many parts of the world. So what many countries do is introduce things like social housing things. If you've been to London, you will know about the council flats. Why they are built is because the government recognizes that even if you make housing affordable for a certain fee, there are still categories of citizens that are too poor and they cannot remain homeless. So for a responsible government, certain measures need to be taken to ensure that those kinds of people are not left to live in indignity like the way the Takwa Bay residents are being mm -hmm. subjected to at the moment. Um, for, thank you very much, uh, Victoria. Unfortunately, this is much that we can take, but thanks for shedding uh, more light on this developing uh, situation. We will continue to monitor it as it unfolds. And I also want to say uh, thank you uh, Abraham Naikon, who is an FVT uh, from Takwa Bay for bringing the story to life. And of course, Barrister Dotun Hassan for bringing also the legal it's perspective uh, to all of these matters. Mm -hmm.